Today we're making some brand new spring decor with the DIYs. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. So the first project will be a Dollar Tree bee wreath. It was inspired by this cute little box here, this little box sign. Be humble. We're going to use some pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. I'm going to use yellow. Then I've got some thrifted yellow deco mesh and two black from the Dollar Tree. I've got these ribbons from Dollar Tree as well in the gardening section. Very pretty little bee themes. And believe it or not, nine feet on the roll. Not bad. I do use two sets of these. And we're going to use a bicycle wheel. This wreath form you can get at Dollar Tree as well, but we're going to try something different on this one. I've never done this before, so this is going to be a totally different wreath idea for me. It might not be for you, and if you watch a lot of crafters, maybe someone else has already done this. But as far as I know, you know, this is definitely my first time, and I've never seen it made. Okay, so on the spokes of this little bicycle wreath, they kind of stick out over the edge of the loop. So I'm using that to help me hold those places, um, those pipe cleaners in place. So they won't slide around from section to section. And we're going to put one on each of these going all the way around this wreath form. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. And this would be a good idea if you are just looking for something to craft and you're going with what you have in your house, but you don't necessarily have another type of wreath form. So this is an idea for you. We're going to go every other spoke right in the middle. Now these will freely move back and forth. So just get it on there as, you know, as snugly as you can. If you need to use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place, you can certainly do that. I have done that before, but, um, Doing it this way and it's not glued down actually helps me later on to move the rows uh, up a bit. And you'll see what I mean when we get to it. So this is every other one and I'm just doing it in a contrasting color. Hopefully this will help you kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. Okay, now we're all the way back around. So there are 12 on the outside and 6 on the inside. We are pretty much making two different rows. Now we're going to work on the outside first, so I'm going to just turn all of those pieces into the middle to get them out of the way. Skip this step if you don't need to do it. Just gets it out of the way, makes it a little bit neater for me, because you know Deco Mesh tries to snag on everything. Okay, now I'm going to move my pieces up and out just a little bit, so they're sort of opened like a alligator mouth, where we can get our mesh right into it. So what I'm using is two rows here, but if you're doing this yourself, you should probably use one yellow and two black, or at least three rows of whatever colors you like. So I'm gonna put them together, pinch them up on the end. You see the difference in the quality of that yellow and the black? See how the black has the little taggy pieces and it's already got a fray where my hands are? The yellow one does not. It's stitched all the way on the edges and it is nice and smooth. I'm going to make nine inch poofs on this wreath. They're close together, so we really don't have to make big poofs here. And if you use a wider deco mesh, like if, rather than using what, the, what is these, like a five inch maybe deco mesh, whatever that standard smaller size is, then if you use a bigger one like 10 inches, you're going to get a lot fluffier, thicker wreath. But if not, then go ahead and use three and you'll, you'll fill it out nicely. There I go again with the word nicely. Okay, so another little poof. We're going to put it down, and I just kind of hold it with my hand while I twist it around. Just a few little twists to hold it on there. Continuing along. Making the same size poofs all the way around that wreath. This is easy to do. We're just going to keep the yellow on top and the black underneath. Okay, so now you can see what I mean. You can still see the wreath form underneath there to some extent. We'll be adding some things on there, so it's going to be thickened up quite a bit. But there are still some areas that you'll be able to see through, and if that doesn't bother you, that is fine. Doesn't bother me, that's for sure. Okay, so 
I'm just going to start pulling these apart. I'll pull yellow to the inside, black to the outside, black to the inside, yellow to the outside. I'm alternating it all the way around. So the poofs are back and forth, back and forth. It almost looks like they are wrapped around one another. Nice. And had that black mesh been a little bit thicker or woven a little more tightly, it definitely would have covered more up. Now we're gonna start with the ribbons. I'm gonna put those together. And rather than measuring these, we are going to let the poofs underneath be the guide. So we're just going to lay them gently over the top at the same height as the poof. See there, I'm checking it to make sure nothing is getting squished down. I don't wanna be squished up and flat. We want some fluffiness to our wreath. I'm gonna go to the next section. Pinch it over and then settle it right over the top without crunching up the poof underneath. This is not hard to do. We're using the two colors. I love it. I think it's very beige. Beish, beish. Yes, I think it's very bee-like. Sweet, right? I mean, what is sweeter, actually? Of course, honey. But little bee butts with little fuzz on it. You know how they have the little yellow pollen that gets stuck on their little butts and their legs? That's cute. That's so cute. I love seeing the pictures of a little bee with its face stuck down in a flower, and they're so little chunky round bees. I don't know. They're cute. All right, so we're all the way back to the front beginning, and you can see here that Dollar Tree does not measure correctly uh, on their spools because we definitely did not have enough of the polka dot one, which is supposed to be the same length as a striped one. It is what it is. We're going to keep moving on. Then we're going to start on our next row, which will be on the inside. I like that this wreath will begin to look like almost like a double bow, like the bows that you get, you know, the old bows that you could get in the packages and you can still get them that you put on a Christmas present. It's sort of what these look like. It sort of reminds me of a flower too. You'll see. All right, so now instead of doing nine, we're gonna do eight because we're on the inside and we don't need it to be as wide and we don't want the inside to be poofier than the outside. So we're just going to go with a eight inch poof place it down and if it moves back and forth it doesn't matter because you can freely squish it back in place remember we're going to have that B picture right in the middle so we'll be moving these out of the way okay so the inside is done and I'm going to grab some more ribbon I took the whole two spools on the outside so this is two more spools that we're going to use on the inside all right, I'm making sure I don't pull anything out of place down here. Nothing. And then we're going to use the same process. So we're just going to lay it over the top of each one of those poofs without making it flat, but don't leave a lot of room because we want it to look like one wrap. You know what I mean when I say that, right? I'm going to continue along here and place the next one down. This is exactly how we did the outside, but we're just doing it on this inner side. And the wreath never looks like too much until you get it all fluffed out. It's just resting right on the top. All right, so now we're back to our original starting place and we can trim this off. I'm just going to cut it at a little dovetail or you could do a slant, leaving just a little bit because I don't want anything to slip out, right? We don't want anything slipping out. And this doesn't take away from the wreath at all, having those little tails there. All right, so we can go ahead and prepare this to be placed onto the wreath. And I'm just going to use some very shallow staples and the stapler and put these pieces of pipe cleaner on here in three different places so that I can wrap these around the metal part of our wreath. And you can always reinforce this with a little bit of hot glue if you need to, but you certainly do not have to. It'll stay on there with the staples. All right, now remember the process we did with the black and yellow? We're gonna do the same thing with the, the ribbon here. We're gonna do dots and stripes and stripes and dots. Dots, then stripes, 
and just keep going and if you need to re to uh, kind of rearrange those posts underneath you can do you can do that too just go ahead and move those out and get those fluffed up as good as you can fluff it nice and full and pretty and you see the difference it already makes look how full this is now there are places where you can still see down but you know that doesn't bother me at all and if you're trying to do it as affordable as possible then you can't let that bother you either right it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be fine now since I'm not gonna add anything else in here I'm gonna make sure of course that they are secured down and then I'll just trim off all of the pipe cleaners just like on my floral arrangements I look at it from all angles make every make sure everything looks nice together the only thing about this is that I wish that the ribbon yellow color would have been more similar to what I have going on in this bee picture because I really really like it but it's not a golden yellow it's just a real pretty rich yellow now we need something to stand this up so it doesn't sink down right because we don't have a ton of poofs under there to help support it so I'm just going to use the ribbon spool that we already used glue it to the bottom and then that's going to give it some support to stand up straight when we put the pipe cleaners through the mesh and down into the wire wreath. Now this is not the wreath that you are going to put on a glass door um, so that you can see both sides or you're going to see the back of this and you know this this you can put on a wall a wood door um, outside in your patio something like that. And you don't necessarily want to use, if you've got hot glue on things, you don't necessarily want to use your um, cheap hot glue because you may have problems with, you know, if you glued anything on with it popping off. Very simple. And I know that you can do this. Hey, come check out my new videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. I'll see you in the comments. The next one is a dried flower bee art. I struggled with the proper name for this. Okay, so here are some little wildflowers that I have off of other projects. This is some beautiful bee fabric that I got from the Crafter Square. Kind of watercolor. I love it. How can you not use it, you know? Pretty. I'm going to use some King's Gold, and it's kind of a goldish yellow color, and some paint brushes. Of course, my antiquing wax brush and a little finger dauber. I love my wax. It's well loved. You can see that, can't you? This frame that came from Dollar Tree, it looks like honeycomb. Now, I got this ooh, probably in the fall. I think in the fall. So, hopefully, they still have these. It's gold, but I don't really, I don't really care for that. But I'm going to keep it gold, but we're going to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to take the glass out, set that aside for another project. I'm going to push these little, whatever these are in the back, these tabs, and it'll help hold it up while we paint it. So I'm going to protect my surface and put that down and grab that king's gold and start putting it on this frame. I'll go all over both sides. Um, if it gets a little bit streaky, you just go back over it. I don't see the need to have to paint this twice unless you really want to. I'll get the outer edges and the inside of this frame as well so that every bit of that metallic gold is covered. We're going to make this a little more cottagey, a little more rustic, and a little more to, to suit my home decor. But make it your own. Always, always make it your own. I'm going to use this as a template on another piece of cardboard. I saved my cardboard. You're going to see where this cardboard came from shortly. And I'm going to trace this out and then cut it out. And we'll use this as our backing. I don't want to put anything down on that little nubby pieces that are sticking out on the back. Okay, so you can either use scissors or you can use some type of a blade or something to cut that. Just be careful. Then I'm going to paint it white. I'm doing this so that the colors pop rather than being a dark color when I put it on. It would be a little more faint looking, I guess, and I don't want that. I want this to really stand out, all the beautiful uh, gold, yellow, black, everything, to really pop. And you can see when you put it against that white, uh, as opposed to putting it against my table, look at the difference. 
You see the difference? That's what I like. So you can see this came from my Asian food takeout. Mm -hmm. Fortune cookies box. And I am going to just trip along here and then we will be gluing this down. We, we enjoy our takeout food from time to time. Yes, we do. We surely do. And they always put like a piece of cardboard in the bottom of the bag, which is very appreciated because it helps give it some stability so you're not having your bowls and your boxes just kind of flapping and flapping around in there and spilling and all that. So I like the idea of doing this. Plus it gives me a little something free to craft with, you know. All right. Hot glue, and then I'm gonna press down right into that glue. You wanna leave a little bit of edge if you're gonna do it this way so that you have enough to fold over. If you cut it too close, you're gonna be folding it to the edge and you're still gonna to have to worry about raveling and, and that sort of thing, or unraveling. Now I'm just pushing it down so it'll be kind of flat. And in the corners, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue and then flip the corner over, almost like um, wrapping a gift, you know? flip it over, press it down, do the same thing to the other side, and then I can fold up that little flap without having anything hanging over. Now it will give you a little extra bulkiness in the corner, but that is not a problem unless you're going to be putting it back into the frame with the original backing. And then this might would be a little too thick, but I'm not going to do that. Nope, not going to do that. Okay. Moving along, this is gonna be the new back for it. Just a piece of scrap cardboard paper. Cardboard paper, cardstock. It's probably from a poster board. I try to get those when I can get them really cheap too. And they're fairly cheap at Dollar Tree. I've got this little corner cutter and it's just like what you would use for scrapbooking or such. I got it from Timu. But you can just cut your edges straight. This is not necessary. I just wanted to, to use my new tool. Okay, so once it's dry, this is how it's going to look. Now we're going to age it. So here we go with my antiquing wax. Adding it and then tapping it off and then dragging it across so that it picks up on all the details in the honeycomb texture. I really like that. We had some bees, uh, honeybees actually, to nest in the corner of our porch one year. Boy, I tell you, that's that's a that's a mess. Honey leaks down, honey gets on everything, it messes up the wood. But man, the honey is good, isn't it? The honey is so good. All right, we're gonna keep going here, and I'm going to get all around the edges as well. And then I'm gonna bring that aging a little bit upward on the sides. This is more about the shadows and the textures in here rather than me aging it. I do like that it's rustic, but and it is antiquing wax, but it gives it more of a earthy look, I think. Just my opinion. And, you know, like I said, if you enjoy the metallic, you can go ahead and leave it that way and just completely skip over this step. And you can put it, put yours in there and it will be great. Always dry in between your layers, of course. We don't want any wax on our white fabric. Then I'm just going to place this back down and we can put the cover on. You can glue your cover in place if you want to, but, you know, it's not necessary. You can always just push your little tabs back down to hold it in place and it won't go anywhere. So far, so good. I like this. You could stop there if you want to. But I've got some dried florals that I want to use. Also from Timu. Uh, get yours anywhere. You can also get the stickers from Dollar Tree that look like uh, ferns and little pieces of greenery. And you can use those. But I'm going to show you if you decide you want to use something like this, how you can do it. It's really not that hard. It won't last as long as the sticker, it, you know, if you're dusting and that sort of thing. But... Uh, you just have to be gentle with it, right? You just got to be gentle. Now I've got fern pieces and little baby breath pieces, some daisies, which are really pretty. And I'm just trying to lay them out in a place where I think they would look pretty. Got some tacky glue. And this works good for this because you have a moment to kind of move it before 
you have to keep everything down. It's not as thick as hot glue, so you're not gonna have that messiness and the strings all over the place. And if you use a long tipped soft brush, you can get in there and gently, gently without much force, put the glue down on top to lock this in place. You see, if you knock a piece off, you just glue it back down. But you really gotta be careful. You can use your brush that is a little bit tacky to pick your pieces up like I just did. You can use a Cricut tool or a weeding tool to just tap it and pick it up. Um, that makes it easy too. So those are just some little tips that might help you if you decide to do this. Maybe you even have some four leaf clovers that you've put in a Bible or in a book that you've saved. Is it just my family that has done that over the years or does anybody else do that? Picking up four leaf clovers. And my mom's a clover hawk. She can find a four leaf clover just by walking outside and looking down. She has always been that way. I'm not so much. Now, my vision is not that good. But um, she might not now, but she always has in the past. Fascinating. So now I'm just going to layer it how I would like it. I start by laying it out. I know how much I'm going to need and I'm not moving stuff around too much. These little flowers, I'm not sure what they are, but they're so frail and lacy. Just really pretty. I'm going to gently tap that into place in that glue that's already there. you got to be super careful. You see how the flower just will stick to the back of that brush? And then I'm just going to place them in a way that I would if I was using some faux florals, you know, or if I was using stickers and I was layering those. I like the idea of layering. To me, it looks more natural than just dotting a flower and then leaving a space and putting another one, then leaving a space. I like that natural look. And I hope that you like this too and the idea of this because um, it's different. It's different and I like it. I think the little bees in the picture will like it too. Yeah, that's good so far. And then I'll just do the bottom corner and I'm going to do it essentially the exact same way. This is why it's important for your layers to be dry before you start putting things on because you don't want, see I took another little flower tip off of there. You do not want for your um, wax to be wet and then you're rubbing wax all over the place. You just don't want, you don't want all that. And so far, the wax has not repelled this glue. So these pieces are still on here, no problem. Y'all, I wanted to remind y'all, I am working on building up my subscribers to 100,000 because I would really like to qualify for a silver play button. And I would like to do that by Halloween of this year, October 31st. Um, so if you're watching this video for the first time, and you are not a subscriber, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel and be part of that number to help me make one of my dreams come true. All right, look at that. Look at that. I hope that you're finding something on this channel valuable, that you are finding inspiration here, that you find this a safe place to come. I try to keep the comments very clean. Stay, I try to stay on top of those so that we're not being hounded by people asking for dates and you know how it is down there ladies I've seen some men hounding y'all I've seen it but I block them as quick as I can don't come over to my channel with any of that bull that's right don't come over here with that okay so now I'm going to make a hanger you don't even have to do this part if you don't want to but I'm using a curtain ring and I'm gonna put some hot glue on the back with a little bit of ribbon through it place that down there And then I'm going to add a little more because I did not uh, put it on both sides. You got to be careful. Protect your fingers. And now look at this little beauty. I really like this. You can use a different method to hang it though if you would like to make it your own. Let's all give a round of applause to our channel members, the Magic Makers, for making all of this possible so that you can watch it for free. Thank you. The next one is a wildflower gnome pot. All right, so this I thrifted and I have had it for a while now. Not sure exactly what to do with it. I've got some blocks of foam. I've got this little be kind little sweet gnome that I got at Dollar Tree. It's a garden steak. Got some more of those flowers because we didn't have to use them on the other project. Some fern pieces that I've recycled. Any greenery you like that would work. 
Here's another fern idea that I could use if I wanted to. And some, some of these little fuzzy pieces. These are interesting. I'm not sure what it is, but I like it. I'm going to use several of these. All right, so these, this is plastic, and it has, it's intended for strawberries, right? So it's actually supposed to be in the yard, but we're not going to use it for that. We're going to make it look that way, though. But I want to clean it up. It's got some seams and things like that on it. I tried sanding it, but this little um, utility knife from Dollar Tree worked much better at getting that even. Then you're going to need to wash everything down, clean it all up. Anytime you thrift something, you should definitely be cleaning it. I actually take mine and put it in some hot soapy water and then dry it. I am going to remove the steak out of here because the steak is very difficult to cut. I don't want to break my my little cutters. So I've loosened it up with my heat tool and I'm trying, trying, trying to get it out every way I can. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, perhaps I could just bend it and then put it in the foam this way and that might work. But then I thought, hmm. No, I don't like that either. We can change this. So eventually it gave in and I got it off. We're going to put a new stake on the back though. But I'm going to use a piece of stem from some greenery I had. And I'm going to just, it's going right through the plastic part, but I'm not going through the metal, right? So it's almost like stripping a wire. And I'm going to pull the plastic piece off so that I have these two wires or metal pieces that will fit into here. This way, I can easily cut this down to the right size. That's why I changed it out. In case y'all are wondering, why didn't you just leave the original one? Because it's too tall, and I don't want to ruin those little cutters down there that's to the corner down there. I don't want to ruin those. I've had them a long time. Okay, so I don't want the be kind. It was kind of blurry when I bought it. All of the options were kind of blurry. So I've just blacked that out. You can go in there with a marker or a piece of chalk. You can write, specialize it. You can put a letter on there, whatever you want to do. But I thought, let's use some greenery on her. Let's use some of the same things we're going to be using in the arrangement to put right down on this cute little gnome girl. I assume it's a girl, maybe a boy, who knows, but it's got long braids. And then we're going to take some greenery and just make it look like she's holding like a little bouquet of flowers. Like she's been walking through a garden. She has picked these and she is taking them back to her little house. Now I'm just cutting little pieces here and there of like the eucalyptus and the leaves and the flowers to just add them down. I actually even took, cut the little pieces of Looks like little seeds over there to the side. I actually cut those into little pieces too, and I'll be adding those rather than using them as a big piece that would overwhelm her because it's such a little pick. So I'm trying to keep it, you know, a little bit closer to imaginary scale. Let's just put it that way. And then I'll add these here and there. And now she has a little bouquet. Isn't that cute? All right, so she needs to age a little bit, right? She's got to have a little dust on her. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of this dried brush on here. I don't add anything extra to it at this point. Just gonna go over some of that brightness and that yellow. And then where I have it on her little ponytails, I'm gonna go back over it and take it right off those braids. Okay, so now here's our little pot all clean. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to spray it down with some of this rustic orange and then I'm going to distress it. I've got to have my projects clean first. If you want to have a dirty pot in your house, that is totally fine. I'm not going to do that. So now it's been sprayed down. It is dry and now I'm going to start aging it with my wax. So we're going to give that depth back to it, right? We're going to give the depth back to it. I'm taking my brush, patting it in there. This has ridges all the way across, almost like as if it were a, a clay piece. So there are little ridges in here. I'm going to go over those ridges and use all of that as accent in here. I'm going to make this look like it has been sitting out in the yard. However, it is clean so we can use it in our house. I think I'm going to use this in my screen porch area though. By the way, are y'all interested in watching me De clean and decorate my screen porch. I have done that for a few years and I would love to do that again for y'all if it's something you'd like to watch. Oh y'all, I just got the notification that I have reached 9 million views on this channel. Yay! 
thank y'all for watching i appreciate it so much everybody who's watching and sharing and liking my videos and subscribing to my channel thank you thank you thank you i appreciate that so very much yay nine million man that's humbling that's a, that's a humbling number y'all okay once you get it together and dry i'm gonna drop a piece of concrete in the bottom you can put some rocks in there whatever you got to put in your pot and I am going to start loading in my foam. Now, I put the concrete in there because I don't want this to get knocked over. And if you walked past it, it would probably fall right over. Okay? I'm going to make sure that I have some of this foam in each of the little window areas where the plants will be so that I can attach it. Okay? doesn't have to make sense on the inside because it's all going to be covered up. All right. So, here's a little different angle. I am going to take some of my floral picks, and most of them are kind of repeats. They all have pretty much the same thing on each little pick. And I'll add them into each of these little spots. Some are kind of upward, some are going to be kind of outward. Trim off anything you need to trim. It's slightly at an angle. You can see how it's kind of at an angle here. And you can reposition, not a big deal, because we're not gluing this down, right? So you can take these out and fix them anytime you need to. I'm gonna cut these picks apart. By the way, these came from uh, Timu. But you can use any greenery from any place you like, okay? Any place you like. There are people who watch the videos, though, who come from other countries and other areas where they don't have pound stores, they don't have Dollar Tree, and they're looking for affordable options, and anybody can get to Timu. So I like to give those people some options okay we don't need to talk about political stuff here we don't do that now okay so we're going to keep going and i'm going to add these in i like how they kind of fall over i'm giving it that little spilled over appearance by just bending the end just a little bit there's wire in the greenery right so you know you can change the shape of it anytime you would like to just by flexing it bending it twisting it however you want to do it whatever looks good to you and brings you joy that's the right thing to do I'll add more here and there where it looks a little bit fuller. And sometimes, according to how much I have, I'll just add it until I get it as full as I want it. The idea here is to make it pretty without having a bunch of the greenery still showing. We don't want a bunch of greenery showing. Okay? Now we're going to go around and keep adding. I've got, I've cut those pieces down a little bit smaller so they're like little sprigs of three and put those off to the side just to give it a little variety and texture difference. And so far, I think it's very pretty. If you have faux strawberries or faux berries of any type, you can certainly use those here. But you know, I like to take things that I thrift and kind of give them a different life and maybe let you see it from a different vantage point. So yeah, it's for berries and strawberries, but does it have to be? No, it doesn't. All right, so once, once we're satisfied with the look of the arrangement, pretty satisfied, and at any point I can change things out if I want, I'm going to take some more of those picks and just add those in the top. I don't want it to be too leggy, so I'll shove those stems as far as I can in there and fluff those out. We got to have a little grassy area for our gnome to stand in. Keep going. Bend some downward so they look like they're spilling over just slightly. I like these. They're kind of fluffy and fuzzy. Just a lot. It's a different texture, you know. I was going to use the ferns, but then I decided, no, we're going we're to go with this in this project. We'll add the little gnome in there. And see, you can take that stem and easily cut it if you need to cut it. Uh, if it would have been a little bit stiffer, that would have been better to kind of hold her in place. But that's okay. That's all right. She is resting against the granary. She's just kind of leaned back a little bit, chilling out. She's picked her flowers, and now she's resting. Okay, so I do add a couple of these pieces of fern back into here. Just a few, just a few here and there. It gives it sort of a flyaway look. It extends it out just a little bit. And I, I like the look of this. I think it's pretty. It's very airy and springy and cottagey. 
And I love the fact that the colors match so much the other projects that we did with bees on it. So if you love bees, this is probably the thing for you. Now look at that, y'all. Think of all the ways you can do this. Look at all the different ways. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I, I like this one. I like all the rest of them too, though. I think they're cute. Um, be sure when you're doing your projects that you're looking in all directions. Remember, you see me moving it around, looking at it at all angles, because you don't ever know where you're going to have a hole or something just doesn't seem to flow right. And because I didn't glue anything down, I can easily move it around. And it's going to be on a screen porch that is covered. So I shouldn't have to worry about things being blown out of place, right? And because I put the concrete in the bottom, I also don't have to worry about it being knocked over unless it's a storm that comes through. So yeah, not bad at all. Here are the bee projects for today. I am going to link for you a bee crafting playlist. I have made lots of bee crafts that I hope that you enjoy. And if I have enough likes on this video, I'll make more. I'd love to have you as a YouTube subscriber. It means a lot to me. Hit the notification bell so you don't hit anything. And if you don't miss anything, if you liked anything that you saw in this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It tells me I'm doing a good job. And it also tells YouTube that I'm working hard and doing a good job for my place of employment. Be humble, y'all. Be humble. Be kind. Be a good person. Be loving. Be forgiving. Be nice. Be supportive. Be somebody that someone looks up to. You never know who's watching you. I thank you for coming by my channel today and watching my three new videos. Happy March, everybody. I will be back from my cruise very soon and right back at it. So I look forward to seeing y'all back in the spring. I appreciate you very much. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you soon. Bye.